Hi, everyone. I hope I am live. I assume I am. So, you know, it's pretty amazing how often that uh, when I say that, I hope I'm live, I am. It's kind of remarkable. And look where I am. I'm in the middle of nowhere. I'll spin the camera around here in a minute, and you'll see I'm in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it's the technology that lets us do this is pretty astounding. That pretty tree back there, I'll show you that pretty tree here in a minute. I'll spin the camera around. I like you to see where I am generally. Sometimes if there's wind or noise, I'm inside the van, or if it's hot, too hot, and I don't want to be outside. But uh, now everything's just right. Slight overcast, so the won't be hot, and uh, not a lot of noise. So there, we got some chat going through. What do we got here? We got uh, MacGyver, Sharon, hello, Bob Wells, Suan, AC, Phyllis, Ditsy, ABZ, and Cliff uh, from McGuire, McGuire, U.S. Air Force Base, New Jersey. Thank you for your service. Uh, Fusion Dream, hi Bob, Johnny from Chicago, Philly in the house, good, we like Philly. Uh, I've been to Philadelphia, um, not often. My uh, my son went to college there. No, that was Pittsburgh, I'm sorry, I'm thinking Pittsburgh. I'm not sure I've been to Philadelphia. No, Philadelphia is right outside of, of uh, Washington, D.C. I've been there. Uh, nice place. Cheap I believe, I believe you are live. Good, good. Ditsy. Hi, Ditsy. Thank you for helping us so much. Hey, uh, uh, everyone. Laura Morse. Hi, Bob. Hello. Oh, I won't do this all the time. You don't. This is not very entertaining. Hi from Canada. Hi from Perump. Uh, Tom Brown. Good to hear from you, Tom. Uh, Georgia. I have a story. Hi. Well, I won't keep doing this. Good afternoon from Florence, Arizona. Lee H3, love Layla. Julie says, hi. Landlord me says, son, son, son. Yeah, I bet there's a lot of sun. Uh, bah. Jimmy Fowler in Denver. Okay, well, I'll stop there. That's good. Enough. I can go on and on with that, can't I? Uh, so we're going to do a, a Q&A today. We're going to go back to solar. I know solar is a big one, and a lot of you want to have just simple basic questions that you get answered. And that's what we'll do here. And if you get more complex questions, I'll try not to go down the rabbit hole. Casey and I have been talking about rabbit holes a lot. How I love to go down rabbit holes and just uh, follow all the twists and the turns. And I'll try to avoid that. Uh, and we'll just try to give you as many simple, plain answers uh, to simple, plain questions as I can. Uh, first, of course, we have announcements. What do we got here for announcements? Uh, I, the good thing about uh, the notoriety that I have is that people write me and they want to communicate to the community. That's one of the primary reasons I'm doing a live every Wednesday. When people write me and say, I have this, um, then uh, I can write and, and tell, I can tell you live. So a lady wrote me and she has starting a, an independent printing house and she is specifically looking for uh, nomad stories. So if you have been writing a nomad story, she is looking to hear from you. And I think that's just great. You know, the more the more we tell our stories online, the better. And so let me give her you her information. We'll put it in the description as well. Her information is, her name is Erin, E-R-I-N, Lee. And you can reach her at crazyinkpub at gmail.com. So just email her. And tell her an idea you have for a nomad story, or maybe you've been working on a story, or whatever. Uh, I think that's great. I hope that works. Um, let me give out yeah, her the website. It's crazyinc.org. Pretty simple. C R A Z Y, inc. I N K. dot org, and uh, crazyinkpub at gmail.com for the email address. So. Writer, tell her you have a nomad story, and she would love, 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 love to hear from you. And I think that's a great thing. Uh, I'm also a big fan of just publish, self-publishing on Kindle, but I believe she will help you with that. I did mention that to her, that I'm a big fan of, of just self-publishing, but I think she will work with you on that too. So whatever your writing prospects are, I hope you will write her and get some information. Uh, last week, I gave out the name of a couple of companies that were hiring, and uh, so... Uh, I heard from them that they had hired one person and that they were in the process of hiring at least one more. So there you go. That's, that's a, a, a wonderful opportunity. Uh, I also hear from people who are giving away uh, things. And uh, 
that's a little more difficult to to pass along. I'd like to figure out a way to do that. And maybe we'll figure that out. Okay, back to Howa. We always like to do keep you up to date on Holmes, the 501c3 that my wonderful friend Suan and I started, Holmes on Wheels Alliance. I believe we are in for a real resurgence of people coming out here. And I know it will make some of you very angry. Um, so some of you will be angry and some of you will be glad that we are here and able to help them. And I fall into that camp. Uh, I've said many times the, the example I use, the Titanic is going down and I have a concession of lifeboats and a minivan, it can be a lifesaver or a van or a bus or an RV or just a car. Just knowing how to live in a car and knowing where to find friends and that you're not alone. That can be a lifeboat in a horrible, horrible disaster. And uh, so I just cannot agree and accept the people that say, Bob, keep your mouth shut. Stop talking. Uh, don't, don't tell people. Just let them drown. I just can't do that. I'm sorry. It would be better for me if I let them drown. And you think it was better for you if I let them drown. I just can't do it. We got to get as many of them out of the water as we can. So when they come out here, uh, I want Homes on Wheels Alliance to be ready as possible. So more announcements on how, uh, and to do that, your support, you know, that's what this is all about. You support us, uh, we support you, we support each other. You need, no man is an island. You don't live and die alone, and we all want to, and we don't. If we get the opportunity to live and die alone, we will die wretched people. We never live and die alone. No man, no woman is an island. We, we need each other. And the more we acknowledge our need for one another, the more I understand that if I do good for you, I'm doing good for myself. And if I do harm to you, I am really, truly doing harm to myself. And if we could all understand that, our lives would be so far better. And that's the goal, the whole thing, all that I'm doing. That's the one primary objective. So things going on with Howa, Homes on Wheels Alliance. No minivan build, we can't, we can't have groups gathering. So we've, uh, we have the money for funds for right, for four actually, I believe, minivans. We're gonna do two, one uh, the last two weeks of July and one the first two weeks of August. And we, uh, we are still, the, that's still open for people to apply, correct, Joanne? Uh, Okay, the July uh, minivan is closed. We will choose someone and contact them sometime soon, I would assume. And the one in August is still available. So if you want to apply to, uh, to get a minivan, and go to homesonwheelsalliance.org slash, uh, what's the slash? NBB. NBB. No uh, NBB, which stands for No Build Bill. Uh, homesandwheelsalliance.org, NBB. Uh, and there's an application there you can apply. There will be numerous people that will apply. I can't tell you. We're only giving away the, the two at this time, and so uh, not everyone will win. And I'm, we'll get the, the awarded the minivan. We'll, we'll donate the minivan to you. So I'm sorry about that. There's Until we get more funding in, we just can't give away a lot more minivans. They, they cost money. Uh, so we'll do two now. We have two more coming up, uh, probably in October. We'll give you details on that as it gets closer. Stay, come back to the live feed to find out. Uh, so that's coming up. We're doing no build builds. That's what we're going to start doing. We're going to put in cots and the, we're going to have the person who uh, is awarded the minivan come to our camp and uh, we're going to have a mentor to takes that person who's been an experienced uh, nomad for a while under their wing and so the two of them are going to work out how to do it and what they're doing and we'll be here uh, it'll be in the Howa camp we'll all be here and we'll all work it all together so it will be whatever works for the person who is awarded the van um, and and we'll do a wish list that's what we like to do it gives you the opportunity to contribute in small ways but you know the person you'll meet them we'll do videos then you'll meet the person uh, you'll know this is who I'm supporting. I'm, I'm making this uh, difference in this person's life, and that's good. Better move on. Uh, the virtual caravans, we, we, we've discontinued the caravans because we can't meet. Uh, we have decided not to start um, new caravans, but what we have now is a virtual caravan. We use Zoom. I'm going to reach up here in front of you a little bit and get that going. 
uh, what we do instead is we use Zoom. Oh, I didn't get it going. Let me start that. That should do it. Uh, we're going to use we're using Zoom meetings instead, and so you can come and meet others on Zoom. If you have the bandwidth, you can see them uh, visually. If you don't have the bandwidth, then you can join on a phone, and people won't see you, but you'll hear them. Um, and so that works out. It works super well. Zoom has just been a, a wonderful, wonderful tool for us. We haven't had any real problems with it. We recommend it highly. It's not hard. We will walk you through. It's easy enough that anyone can do this, I promise. And we'll walk you through any problems. So the, uh, we have caravans. Go to, go to meetup.com slash caravans. That's meetup.com slash caravans. And you'll find a listing of all the caravans and the times. We're doing classes. We have a class that is every Saturday. We have large groups. We have small groups. We have morning coffees. We have af afternoon uh, gatherings. Uh, a myriad something that you will be interested in we have women's only meetings uh so then something that each of you will be um will be interested in can serve you better so you're face to face now because we uh is this on here no nope. we are announcing the uh how we're going to do I can give the outline. Okay. I'm going to give the outline okay. so people know. Uh, we, we asked you last week what you thought about uh, holding care of the um, continue starting the caravans again uh, because there is a risk. The COVID-19 has not disappeared. It's not gone away. It's floating around in many places. It's worse than ever. Uh, and so we're, we don't we're not we don't want to live in a dream world where we just pretend reality isn't reality. Some people prefer to live that way. Uh, I prefer not to live that way. Reality can be ugly, but sometimes you just, but you have to look at it and, and deal with it where it is. Um, and so it's out there and we don't want to be responsible, ethically responsible for bringing a group of people together and then um, it, it gets in and people die. And we're older and a lot of us have a lot of impairments and it just would, it could be a death sentence if it got into one of a group of, of older nomads. So we don't want to deal ethically ourselves morally with that responsibility. I don't, I don't want to kill you. However, you're adults and you make your own decisions and I'm not going to tell you to do it or not to do it. I just don't want to be personally responsible for having done it to you. I can't live with that. I have to go to bed every night knowing that I have lived ethically by the highest moral standard that I can. Uh, and so I don't want to do that. However, we have created a, a meeting group on Facebook where you can go and meet others and say, this is where I am. I'm in Texas. I'm in Florida. I'm in Vermont. I'm in Arizona. I'm in wherever you are, Washington. Uh, I like to meet and we'll start our own caravans. And that's what we want. You know, our goal always is to turn over your life to you. We just want to be a, an, a, a facilitator. We put you together, you run your life. That's all we want. <laughs> you know, we know, well, I've tried hard to, to control nomads, and I know it's totally, totally impossible. It's herding cats. You get a 10,000 cats together and decide to move them down in a herd. It's just not going to happen. I don't want to herd you. I don't want to direct you. I don't want to control you. So we are putting a way for you. We're creating a way for you to get together, and you make your own groups. You make your own decisions. I'm going to go meet with these five people. And I'm going to take the risk of uh, this disease all by myself. I'm not going to blame anyone else. I'm just making my own personal decision. I'm an adult. I can make that decision. That's what we want. So how? What's the name of the Facebook group? Camp Together. So the, it's a, on Facebook. Look, uh, do a search on Camp Together. Pretty simple. And it will be our group and and uh, how is group? How is group? Uh, Homes on Wheels Alliance. It's a function of Homes on Wheels Alliance, and um, it's important legally that I say that, so it's not a uh, it's cheap RV living function. Um, so it's a how a function, and so uh, you can go there and find people, and you'll uh, we're we're asking we're suggesting people use FreeCampsites.net. So you go to free campsites. You're all in Texas. You all decide you want to go to or you're you want to go up to New Mexico in the high country, 
find a place, a nice campsite on New Mexico. It will give you a GPS point. It will give you directions. It will tell you everything about that campsite, tell you if there's internet. Say, okay, let's all go meet up there. And so everyone in Texas goes and meets there. Or if that doesn't work, you want to be somewhere in Texas, go to Austin, go to Houston, uh, go to Louisiana. You know, Louisiana, <laughs> I'm not very good with that name, am I? Uh, has some fantastic camping. And because you're in the forest, it's going to be a lot more comfortable. Just on the border of Louisiana, there's no heart. There's so little camping in Texas uh, that I just cross right over into the border, and man, there's fantastic dispersed camping. So uh, none of that's relevant, is it? I just can't. I know things, and I want you to know them. If it will help you, I want to tell you. I'm sorry about that. Uh, okay, so that's an example. And so uh, camping together group on Facebook. It's how you can create your own caravan. And if you have any questions, you can write us. We'll help you all we can. But uh, this is your uh, your adults. You do it. And uh, we're just putting uh, facilitating you getting together. All right. Finally, we have sweepstakes coming up. We love sweepstakes. Um, like uh, we, we're doing two right now. Uh, we Roll is donating one of their 6 by 10 by 6 foot tall trailers. It has uh, windows. It has. It's going to have barn doors in the back. Uh, it's and we'll have a vent and it's insulated, has a floor on it. So it's ready for you to build and turn into your own home. Um, that's a really good thing. He's giving that away and all you have to buy is uh, a ticket. It, you don't even have to buy a ticket for these sweepstakes. That's the difference between a sweepstakes and a raffle. No purchase is necessary. To learn all about that, go to Howa, H-O-W-A dot rally up dot com. Uh, and you'll see listing there some the the, uh, the sweepstakes we have going on. The rules are there. How you can get a ticket for free. You will learn that there. Howa.rallyup.com, and you'll learn all about how you can enter and the sweepstakes. And then you can buy more tickets if you want to get more chances. Uh, and so the more tickets you buy, the more the more likely your chances. And just know that it's really a donation. The money goes to Homes and Wheels Alliance to support our mission, and we will make sure it gets to people in need, and maybe you'll win a, a new trailer. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And so uh, it's just a win-win. I think if you think of it as entertainment, uh, I, there's not, I don't, nothing wrong with gambling. I don't gamble much, but every so often I'll go to a casino and I'll play $20 on, on uh, blackjack uh, or, or set and you know, put in pennies and nickels. And I, and I just say, well, this is a twenty-dollar night of entertainment, and it's well worth it to me. Uh, that's all it's worth to me, uh, and that's what this is. It's entertainment, but it's doing good, and there's a chance you can win. <laughs> so it's hard to go wrong with all. That. Boy, you got to stop talking. Um, that's going on, and also uh, at, we are going to give away two folding electric bikes. Uh, we're going to award in a sweepstakes. Uh, no purchase necessary. Uh, in uh, two electric bikes from electricbikes.com. That's spelled L E C T R I C E bikes.com. So go there to win one of the electric bikes at uh, in the uh, no purchase necessary sweepstakes and uh, to howa.rallyup.com. And if you're looking for an electric bike, support them. They gave us the money for two of the minivans. So they are a fantastic. Fantastic organization. They make a great product at a superior price. I don't think you can buy one cheaper. And they're good quality, really good quality for the price, especially for the price that are superior quality. Uh, I really recommend them. And I hope we will all support them if you're looking for an electric bike. Same with Tom at We Roll. These guys have hearts of gold. They're doing it. They're, yeah, they're, it's a business. They're businessmen. They want to make a little money on it in the end. But they are good human beings and i know them and i've talked to them face to face and i know they're good human beings and they care about our community so that's what really is important to me that's why we're working with them um so go all those places okay i'm done i'm done with i'm not gonna do anymore we're gonna do an, uh, questions and answers let's go to questions card number one how do we figure out how much solar oh let me let me spin you around i like you to see where i'm at i'll spin you around i'll turn the camera there's uh oh there's the van there's my van and I'm just going to spin you around see where I'm at nice pretty spot here huh uh, solar sitting out there it's kind of an overcast day we've had a lot of 
heat and sun here in Oregon. So an overcast day is uh, nice. Look at the size of that tree. I love that tree. Uh, when the sun is shining and... Uh, <laughs> oh, there, oh, there's Cody. Where's he at? Code, come on. Look at that dog. I call his name and he's coming. That's such a good dog. That's a good dog right there. Can I show you him? Come on over here. I don't know if you... Okay, all right. You're shy. He knows there's a camera somehow, so he doesn't come over. Yeah, he's a good dog. Boy, that's a good dog right there. Okay, uh, so that's a huge tree. It doesn't really look all that big from here. Here's my setup. I've got my iPad on, and uh, I, if I'm going to talk solar, i got to have a calculator because I can't think of that way and then don't pad and then just swing around. And there's my wonderful friend, Sue Ann, executive director of Homes on Wheels Alliance. She's waving there and saying hi. And uh, that's a great camp, isn't it? Now, you got to admit, you'd rather be here, wouldn't you? Wherever you are right now, wouldn't this be a fantastic place to be? I just, uh, man, I really, really love my life. And I want you to have your best life. And so uh, I hope you do. I really hope you do. All right, I think I'm done here. Let me turn the cameras around and we'll keep going. Oh, no, I messed up. Oh, I do want to mess up. Let's turn around over here. All right, so it's not too totally messed up. Is it going to drift off on me now? That might work. Okay, so first question. Am I still in? Uh, yeah. How do we figure out how much solar we need? Example, if I want to use a 400-watt appliance about 45 minutes a day, thanks in advance. Well, let me just answer your question uh, rather than, uh, I guess it is better to teach you. Uh, well, I just say you're going to need 200 watts. Probably won't do it. That's a lot of power output. Uh, if I'm, it's probably going to be a 12 volt appliance, so you're going to have some power waste through the inverter, at least 10 percent. And um, so I'm going to round off to uh, 480 watts divided by 12 volts. Uh, so you're looking at about 40 amps. That's a lot of 40 amps is a lot. You're going to want to put back in. You got to put that back in every day plus everything else you're using every day and everything you're using overnight. That's a lot. I would recommend 400 watts of solar uh, with that kind of usage. 300 would be marginal. Uh, 200 is not enough. For most people, 200 is enough. But if you know you're going to be using a 400 watt appliance every day for about an hour, a little less than an hour, uh, I would want. I would recommend no less than 400 watts. Um, and um, the big thing is, don't think of the best times, think of the worst times, because I'm going to assume you're going to want to do this all winter when the days are short. You're going to want to do this when it's cloudy. It's overcast today. I'm not getting hardly any solar in today. Uh, you, you know, so you don't think about the best times, you think about the worst times, and you overbuild. You always assume the worst, and that way, when the bad times come and it's overcast or it rains for a week straight, or in when the days are really short in winter, uh, you can still survive. You're not destroying your batteries when there's no sun. So I would recommend you get 400 watts. Um, uh, 300 would be the really the minimum, and 200, and I think you're just you're going to be uh, destroying your batteries and replacing them all. See, sometimes we think, well, that's a lot of solar. I don't want to spend that much. You're going to pay for it. You're going to pay for that much solar because you're going to destroy your batteries more often. And, if you, and you're going to be replacing your batteries and replacing your batteries is going to cost you more than the initial in, uh, investment in solar. So really, the batteries become your most expensive part of the system. And so you want to keep the most maximum life you can get out of your batteries. So you build a system appropriate to the use. 400 watts. Uh, and do you see the ratio there? You're going to use a 400 watt item for about an hour a day. 400 watts is the answer. Uh, if you were going to use an 800 watt out item every an hour a day, then you would need 800 watts. So I'm looking at a one to one or a little more than a one to one. 500 watts would be preferable. So uh, so figure about a 1.25 to the largest draw you're using in your system multiplier. Um, Okay, uh, Dorothy Huffman, I need to run a featherweight sewing machine for a few hours a day. How much? How do I figure out how much that would drain from my solar? I am looking into getting a solar setup on my travel trailer. I would need solar for my fridge and electric. 
depends on which fridge you have. I'm assuming you have a propane fridge. It doesn't draw much fridge. Um, I'd have to know a lot of details on on the on the sewing machine. I can't just guess. Um, I'm going to tell you this: you're going to draw a lot of power. Travel trailers and all RVs have a lot of phantom draws that you just don't know about. If and you're probably going to want to run your furnace, and your furnace is an enormous uh, is an enormous draw on power. Most people are terribly surprised how much they power they need to run a travel trailer. Uh, I would say an absolute minimum on any RV is 500 watts. And you want more than most with your sewing machine. I would say the, what most people should have for an RV is 750 watts. Now you can, what you can do is you can have less and supplement it with the generator. And nothing wrong with that. I, one of my best friends is in a class C and I think she has 300 and, like 380 or about 400 watts. But she has to supplement it with her generator. She carries a 200 watt, uh, a 200 Honda, a 2000 watt Honda clone, which works really well. It's an energizer. Uh, some of you may know from what I'm telling you. It's Carolyn, my friend Carolyn. I think she runs about 400 watts, but she has to run uh, a generator to supplement it. It's not quite enough. 500 is probably what you need to really mean that your generator almost never runs. And if you want your generator to never run, you really need 750 watts. Um, people just underestimate all the draws that come out of an RV, especially when you want to run a sewing machine. So uh, 500 is the minimum, 750, and have a generator as a supplement. And, and, and one of the little Honda 2000 clones, they don't take up a whole lot of space. You do have to pick them up and move them around if you don't have a generator bay. Kathy Frost DeGost, I will really have to pay attention because I'm ready to hook up solar and don't have a clue where to start. Where do you start when you have zero knowledge about solar? Kathy, you don't give me uh, any information about what your draw is. I have a, I'm going to have a video coming out with this. The, at, the, at the simplest level, you can get away with the little fold-out panels and a USB brick. I mean, you can get, you can do away with a, a, like a 15 or 30 watt fold out solar panel and, and a USB battery. Uh, I mean, for a lot of people, that would be enough. It, not most, but for some. Uh, and then the step up from there is uh, one of the um, generators, any one of the portable generators and a and 100 watt solar panel. And for, for really simple needs, that's going to do it. That'll be enough. They're, they're way overpriced. They're just so terribly, terribly overpriced. I, I hate to see people buying them. The step up from that, and the one that I really recommend for minimal needs, is something like the folding uh, suitcases. Now, I'm not talking about one of those folding solar panels that works with a generator, because they don't have inverters. Uh, and they don't have, sorry, don't, scratch that. I just confused you. They, uh, we're not talking about inverters. They don't have solar controllers. Uh, the solar controller is in the generator, so they don't need a solar controller in the panel. What I'm talking about is some... Uh, you're live. Hopefully I came back. Hopefully I'm on again. I don't know. It just happens. Uh, I'm not... Yeah. I've never understood exactly why that happens, but it does, and that's okay. It didn't last long, fortunately. Sometimes it lasts a long time. <laughs> it takes me a while to figure it out. Uh, the next step up is these, like a Dokio, and I actually like Dokio. They're really cheap. The controllers are really poor but they work fine they'll work for a while and then when they break you just buy a little better one uh, you, you know you can buy a new do a controller for a dokio for 20 30 bucks and the panels work just fine they're just they're just solar panels and then they will have alligator clips i have videos on these and i really like these i think these are a good way to go they're better brand names just make sure it has a controller built in and i really suggest you try to find one with a controller uh, that is w pretty much waterproof. So if it does start raining on you while you're out and you're not aware of it, uh, that they aren't destroyed by the rain. So and they make them now waterproof. Uh, controllers that go underneath the, the... And you can get, if you really have the... if They're bigger and they're heavier and they're harder to move around. The, the hard folding suitcases. Uh, but I really kind of... I like the, um, the folding soft ones. And then they're just battery alligator clips that clip onto a battery. So you buy a battery... 
stick it up under anywhere in the mount you want to ideally you're going to mount it down so it can't fly but if you i would you know i'd get away with uh putting it away in the passenger seat of your van your minivan your car put the battery up in there just uh, whatever you're camping set the the, the soft so, uh, solar panel out and clamp it and then it's on i have a video on how to get power out of it it's really simple a lot of you can buy a lot of things that you just take the screw the, the bolts off and put on a, a, a ring connector and you bolt it back out you can do that with an inverter you can do that with a 12 volt outlet cigarette lighter outlet it, it's really simple uh and it's cheap it's so much cheaper than these uh, generators and their panels um just so much cheaper and uh, I really, that's really what I recommend. And ideally, you want to get a mantle, panel mounted on your roof. It won't get stolen. Um, it, you know, it won't, it won't blow over in the wind. You don't have to drag it in and out. You won't have to drop it. Dogs won't pee on it. I mean, that's a pretty big deal, dogs peeing on it. Um, my dog pees on everything. Where Cody just pees on anything he can find. Um, and so, you know, those are, that sounds silly and gross, but, man, that's what you got to think about. It starts raining and all of a sudden your panel's outside and and uh, even if you're using a solar generator, it's the same thing. You got a soft panel outside, starts raining, somebody steals it, uh, you forget it. Um, you can't, it's not plugged in while you're driving. Of course, you but with your solar generator, you can plug in and charge while you drive. Um, mounted on the roof is just ideal. And if you can't do it, paying someone to do it. That's really what you want to do. I recommend 200 watts for nearly every Nomad. Uh, if you have uh, a specific need above the average, uh, then get uh, get 300. Uh, 400 will do nearly all of us really well. Okay, Mary Ann Mayer. Oh, I'd love a basic solar 101. Well, I just gave you a basic solar 101. Uh, what components are not are needed and what they do in the system? It is so so simple. Uh, you've got a solar panel. And a black and white cable coming out, of, a black and red cable coming out of that. You have a solar controller and a black and red cable go into a positive and a negative post. That's all there is to it. There's absolutely nothing more to it than that. Um, well, there's a little more. It's an MC4, and so you buy an MC4 extension cable and you plug in the MC4. The MC4 will tell you right on it, positive or negative. And I would always suggest buy red electrical tape and black electrical tape and the red, the, the positive one, make sure you mark it red. So, or if it's not already a red wire, you want to make sure you want to always understand red is positive. This wire is red. It's positive. Uh, just buy some red electrical tape, and it'll tell you right off the panel which one is which. I've, I don't think I've ever seen one that didn't, and if and if it didn't, then that's kind of bad. Um, so, so it's just a red and black to positive and negative on the solar controller. Then you have a positive and negative coming off, and it's just red and black, red to positive, black to negative, going to the battery, and it's nothing more in the world than a, the positive post gets the red one, and the negative post gets the black one. It's it's red and black in three components. That's all there is to it. Um, really, it's just not very hard. Most everyone can do that. Now, getting it out, again, like I've said, you can buy a... Um, you can buy uh, a, a cigarette lighter plug that already has ring terminals and a fuse on it. You take off the bolts, you put it on. Same thing with an inverter. You can buy inverters with uh, battery clips, and then you just clamp it on, clip it on. That works fine. Uh, battery clips, and you've got an inverter. You've got 110. You've got 12 volt coming out for USB. A lot of the inverters now will come with USBs built right in, right on them. 110 volt and uh, and a uh, 5 volt USB. USB. Uh, and that's all there is to it. it. It's just not that more. It's just simple. It really honestly is a solar panel, a controller, and a battery. And a black and a red wire coming out of one going into the other. A black and red wire coming out of one and going into the other. It, there's nothing more to it. It's that basic. It gets a little complicated because you're going to have to cut and make your own wires. You're going to have to know how to cut a wire and strip off just the outside and then connect a... Uh, a uh, a connector to it, a ring terminal. We have a ton of questions. I better hurry up. I'm so going. So uh, okay, I better stop. That's it. That's it. That's the whole thing in a nutshell. I'm still confused about watts and how long you can run a 35 watt fan with a 100 watt battery. 
a 35 watt fan uh a 35 watt fan is going to draw you it depends on if it's 110 volt or 12 volt um it's going to draw about four amps you have 50 watt amps to play with you have 100 watt well you can't have a 100 watt battery you probably have a 100 amp hour battery uh that means you have 50 amp hours to burn you can only burn half and your fan is going to draw about four amps an hour if you did nothing else just the just the fan you could run the fan a, a 35 watt fan for about 10 hours 10 or 12 hours but you you wouldn't do anything else you'd have to recharge it the next day uh, yeah that's about it uh, of course during the day uh, yeah that's it it's a 35 watt fan uh would be about three amps i guess between three and four amps depends on if it's 110 or not uh, so if it's three amps uh you could run it for 10 12 maybe 14 hours yeah joe streeter bob this, how did i get that you divide uh you divide watts by volts and that gives you amps the battery is measured in amps so you have to get the amps so you divide watts in this case 36 we're going to call it 36 because that's easy divided by 12, and that's three. So it draws three amps an hour. And if you run it for 10 hours, uh, that's 30 amps. Your battery is only gives you 50 because it's a 100 amp battery and you can only burn 50, you can only burn half. So you have 50 to play with to burn and you're burning 30 of them on the fan alone at 10 hours of use. Okay, so it's simple as watts divided by volts equals amps. Uh, Joe Streeter, Bob, how did you, the solar turn out on this camp fifth wheel that I have a 2000 model fifth wheel camp would like to put solar on it. Thanks for the videos. You know, I don't really know. And I've con I've been in touch with her a couple times since then. And she's never said uh, she had a problem, but she never said she didn't have a problem. So I can't give you a definitive answer, but I think if there had been a problem, she would have let me know. I think it worked fine. Uh, I can't imagine why it wouldn't have. VHB tape really does work. What most people fail at is giving it enough surface area. And by, by using the, um, the entire length of, of the panel and gluing and then making it so it curved, it's, I have a video out on how to install a, a, a hard fixed solar panel on a curved roof. And we cut V's into an angle, aluminum, aluminum angle, and so that it flexed. And then when it flexed, we put VHB tape on it and, and taped it down so that the entire surface was VHB tape and taped down hard. It, it worked well. I can't imagine a reason why it wouldn't have worked. Uh, you can watch that tape to see how we did it. But I don't have a definitive answer. It did or it did not work. I'm sorry. Um, okay, done with that. Card two. Janice McKinney. Can solar panels and max air be put on an added top extension on a van like you have yes uh yeah uh i can turn my van around uh, i can turn the camera around here and show you uh, my van i uh, even just take it up i'm gonna hold it up in the air and let's see can i do i get all the cameras no i don't get all the cameras uh so i'll kind of hold it up here you can see i can't see the camera now i have both I have panels mounted on my roof of my fiberglass top, and I also have a, uh, a fantastic fan. I hope you can see that. I hope I'm aiming at the right place, and I don't know if I am or not. Looking good? Okay. Let me come back over here. Uh, get settled back down again. Uh, so, yes, you can. Now, that was a creative. I've never seen anyone else do what I did, but... Uh, you're going to have to be kind of creative. Like I said, I've never seen that done before. And I've never shot a video on it. I should, because it's so creative. But, uh, uh, so yes, the answer, the short answer is yes. And um, you just have to know some, have to have someone who's kind of creative and willing to think outside the box. This is, this is using square aluminum tubing to build like a raft. It, it's kind of like a raft and the solar panels are the logs on the raft. 
So we built a square out of the aluminum tubing and we put bolts through into the roof of the, um, of the fiberglass roof. And when we, uh, when I had them, when they made this fiberglass roof, fiberglass right in some uh, one by fives. Uh, and so it has one by fives where I needed the, the bolts to go through. And then, so this frame, it's a raft. Think of it, think of it if you're gonna build a log raft. So you have a frame and then the logs all detached to it. Well, that's what it is, except those solar panels are the logs. And then the, uh, once that was all together, We'd already put the bolts through so that we could reach the top of the nuts. We screwed through that uh, the fiberglass roof and those one by fives that were fiberglassed into the the, the roof, and then uh, it, it works really well. So it's really uh, it have to be done for each roof. Each roof would be slightly different, but it worked really well as you can see, uh, and it's it's worked perfectly for me. And it actually hangs over by about 18 inches, 12 to 18 inches over the back so I could get all 400 watts on there. They're just four 100 watt panels. Um, it worked well. So yes, you can, that was a little creative, but if I had just used three 100 watt panels, it would have been real simple. Uh, or a single 300 watt would have been even simpler because they're more efficient. Uh, Nomad Terry, how many hours does your solar last on rainy or winter, rain, cloudy day? I have a lot of battery. I have much more battery than most people have. I have four golf carts uh, and so I go a long time, and if I know bad weather's coming, I go into conservation. Conservation is important for solar, and most people don't think about that. Um, if if you got you know bad weather's coming, it you should be your goal to stop using power. Don't use any. The big thing I use is the microwave, and if I've got bad weather coming, I just stop using the microwave. I've got an oven. If with bad weather coming me, coming means that it'll be cooler, and so I kind of like to have the warm impact of the propane stove. I just stopped using the microwave. I just stopped using everything. So having a backup, uh, my batteries, because I have, I have four golf carts, is I've got an enormous reserve. I don't believe I've ever completely run out of power. Um, and the more power you have, the, uh, the more solar panels you have, the more you get, you get some solar, even on a really cloudy day. During the rain, it's pretty much zero. Uh, if it's actually raining, you're not getting anything. That's just too much. So, uh, but the more you have, if it's just cloudy, you will get some. If there's clouds, if, if you, um, so let me say it again. Uh, if you walk outside and you can see any shade, shadows, if you can see any shadows, you're getting some power and the more solar you have, the more you're getting. You can get one, two, three amps, which if you've gone into conservation mode, one, two, three amps could be a lot. Uh, so that just, conservation is much more important on solar than most of us give credit to. Be very careful in how much you're drawing and that way you get through the bad times. Okay, uh, Cape Dinkum, Carpe Dinkum, I'm looking for a simple non-install solution for solar power van camping. Uh, uh, Dokio, buy a Dokio 200 or 300 watt uh, panel and a single battery and just clip it on and, and, and attach the things to get the power out. That's as simple as it gets and cheap as it gets. The, the Dokio is very cheap. I think you can i think they're a dollar a watt so you can buy i have a friend that has the 300 watt and he's very happy with it um the 300 watt uh and it folds down small uh he has a uh a cpap and so it's really important to him that it works and it does so i think you get that for 300 bucks and 100 and it's everything it's got the controller inside it uh, everything it's all it's got the wiring um then all you have to do is buy a battery and you can buy a you can buy us an AGM battery on Amazon for about $170 uh, delivered and delivered. I have prime it delivered pretty fast. Um, and then you're done and that's it. So that would be 500 bucks for a 300 watt system uh, in the ballpark. And you'd have some extras for little things. Uh, <clears throat> Scott Berman is a Harbor Freight solar kit worth buying. Well, there's the old one, which was the 45 watt, 315 watt panels. They were amorphic panels. Um, I think they were too much for what you got. You don't want to pay more than a dollar a watt. Uh, you don't ever want to pay more than a dollar a watt for a system, for the solar and the controller. If you can get them for a dollar a watt, and I don't, they have a new one, and I'm not, I'm not familiar enough. 
If, but let me say this. If it's comforting enough for you to risk getting it, then it's worth doing. Because better to start with a mediocre system that you're comfortable with and to keep putting it off and never doing it. Once you get that introductory system with the Harbor Freight, and I'm not, they have a new one and I'm not all that familiar with them. Uh, and But even the old 45 watt uh, amorphic panels, they work amazingly good quality. They worked well. They were just too expensive for what you got and they were really inefficient. I mean, the space they took up for 45 watts was ridiculous. But they were good panels and they would last a long time. I had friends that would buy them and uh, and the glass would fall over. It's not even safety glass. The glass just went right away. But they just kept working, even with cracks in the glass. So they're surprisingly good quality. Um, so yeah, I would think so. If it makes you comfortable enough to venture into solar as your first system, I think you'll fall in love with solar afterwards. And maybe you'll decide, well, I'll, I'll do this learning and uh, spending to get the best system I can. So yeah, I think they're worth buying. Um, if at all possible, buy a better, buy something better. Uh, peace, love, and anarchy. I like that. Uh, need solar wiring diagram. Well, I just did it. I'll do it again and really fast. Uh, you got a solar panel and out of it comes a, a red and a black wire, a positive and negative, and it goes to the controller and it goes into the positive and negative post and it comes out of the positive and negative post and goes into the positive, positive and negative post of the battery. Now that's it. That's the whole thing, beginning to end. Now you would add on a um, inverter to, to your battery and that, what is that? It's a positive and negative wire coming out of the positive and negative post and going into the positive and negative post of the inverter. That's it. That's all there is. Uh, there's nothing, any more complication and fear is just in your brain creating it. That's the whole thing. You're using an MC4 and you have to know what an MC4 connector is. It's just a matter of plugging it in. But you do have to know the terminology, MC4. You're going to have to add some fuses in there and you have to strip and crimp some wires for connectors. But that's the, that's the diagram. There's no other diagram if you're putting it in a van. If you're putting it into an RV and you do not say, then it gets a lot more complicated because the RV is a complicated piece of equipment. But if you're putting it in a car or a van, it's that simple. Red and black out, red and black in, red and black out, red and black in, and that's it, period. Nothing to it. Uh, T Meadows to Gill. If I have a 2,500 watt panel, there is no such thing as a 2,500 watt panel. How big a controller do I need? Uh, well, so what could you mean? The biggest panel that I know of is about 400 watts. I know there are 400 watt panels. They're hard to find, but they're out there. I don't think there's a 500 watt panel. What can you mean? Okay, well, let's, uh, let's just assume you have 2,500 watts, uh, however many panels you have. Not important, I don't wanna get bogged down in nothing. Uh, you need 10 amps per 100. You need, a, you need 2,500 amps, 250 amps. You need 250 amps of, of controllers. What I would recommend you do, what I'm a big fan of doing is backup, is redundancy. So uh, I would run, uh, I'd probably break it up into 600 watt systems and put each 600 watt system into uh, a 60 amp controller. So you would need four 60 amp controllers and then you would have four complete systems. I don't even know if you can buy a controller big enough to handle 2,500 watts. I really doubt it. Uh, and the cost is something like that. Now you're into, you're into houses. If you're talking 20, if you're, if you're talking kilowatts, you're talking two and a half kilowatts, uh, you're talking houses. And that's a whole nother ball game that I know nothing about. I would break this up into uh, four 600 watt systems and they can all go into the same battery bank. Um, that's not a problem. Uh, or you could break them up into the different battery banks. And that, see, but the, the thing being, uh, with, with uh, 460, uh, the, the panels are probably never gonna break. They're just gonna last you forever. They're, they're just last forever things. 
but if uh, your controllers will fail eventually, that's just the nature of the beast. They create heat and, and eventually they break. And so if one of them breaks, if, so if you have four different systems, one of them breaks, you still have three operating systems. You still have a lot of power. Um, and so, um, yeah, you need four 60 watt uh, controllers is what I would suggest. Fred Coyle, what is the most realistic amount of solar you can have on a van? 900 watts is hard on a van, but maybe possible. Three 300 watt panels. It, it'd have to be an extended van and they'd have to go crosswise. They'd stick out six inches on both sides of the van and most vans curve in and so they'd really stick out. But you could probably get three, uh, you could probably get three um, 300 watt panels for 900 watts total. 600 is comfortable on a van. You wouldn't get a vent. You could put a vent on your back window. That would be, and those work pretty well. Uh, and most you could possibly do. And then you can hang them off the sides. You can always hang them off the sides. So if you hung a 300 watt panel off both sides, uh, you could have 900 on the roof and uh, another 600 on the sides, maybe more than 600, uh, more than 600. Uh, boy, you guys really like power. <laughs> I had a friend who put 600 watts on his van, and I, so I know that can be done. And he also had a vent on the roof, so I know that can be done. It was an extended Dodge. And I said, well, what do you want to do, run a city? Because that's a lot of power, 600 watts. Yeah, that really is a lot of power. But it's not enough to run an AC, so what's in between? Okay, uh, Fred Coyle, what is the most realistic amount? We just did that one. Wanda Hutchins, what's the most portable solar you can hook up to a 27 foot travel trailer well there is no limit because if it's portable you're carrying it out the limit is in your ability to tolerate carrying it all out and then carrying it all back in uh that's the only limit and where are you going to store it but say you could empty out a bedroom and just use that for storage i mean it could be thousands of watts because all you got to do is carry it all out and all you got to do is plug them all in and I would use multiple. I like redundancy. I would use multiple systems. Uh, the, then the limit there is, uh, I mean, if you built kilowatts, uh, a thousand watt is a kilowatt. So if you had 2000 watts, that would be two kilowatts or 3000 watts would be three kilowatts. So if you were into the kilowatts, we're measuring by that now instead of, you know, less than a hundred, less than a thousand watts. Um, uh, it's just unlimited. <laughs> However much you, you can put batteries, you can put on the floor, however much you want to carry in and out. That's the realistic problem. You've got to carry it all in and out. And uh, you've got to store it inside. And if you're using hard panels, they're going to weigh 40, 50. Say you get a big hard panel. Uh, say they're all 100s. Well, that's a lot of space. 10 100 watt panels. Uh, yeah. Portable solar. Well, I'd want to put all I could on the roof. Um, most travel trailers, you can get quite a lot on the roof. Look for all the spaces you, that will take a 300 watt panel. The 300 waters are, are really efficient in size and dimensions. Uh, and they're not hard to find. You can find 300 waters pretty easily. And uh, they're good. They're really good. I recommend them. Go, um, it's, yeah. Portable just means you're carrying it in and out. And the only limit there is on your ability to tolerate all that carrying it in and out. Okay, Nick, card three. What time is it? Five ten. How do you mount solar on a minivan with no roof rack? Feet. You just, uh, you, you buy feet. You can buy Z, Z mount feet that just bolt into the solar panel and then bolt right through the roof. It really is no big deal. It, it, isn't, it isn't hard at all. Um, it really, honestly, you know, we, we make... These things are much too complicated. Uh, you just use, you bolt feet into it. Not, you know, you can buy, go to Amazon and buy feet. Do a Google, Amazon search on on uh, solar panel feet and they'll, you'll set something that will come up. There's really nothing to it. Uh, you just have, and the scary thing is, now you have to drill a hole through the roof. It's nowhere near as bad as it sounds. Nowhere near as bad as it sounds. Uh, it's not that hard. Well, it's easy. Physically, it's easy. It's scary. Just a lot of a, a lot of um, uh, cock, uh, 
Oh, I forgot the name of that stuff. Boop. Uh, just good quality uh, RV caulk, and you'll, you'll be fine. How many watts do you have on your van? 400. I have 400 watts on my van, four 100 watts panels. Uh, nondescript. I was just looking up solar info yesterday. I was wondering how much I'd need for my bus. Again, it, uh, well, how much do you want? Uh, do you want to run an air conditioner all day? Then you're going to need a couple thousand. You'll need two kilowatts. Uh, you just want to run a 12 volt fridge and all the USB, 200 watts. And, and where you personally fall between just kind of minimal needs and maximal needs, it's a personal thing. It's all what you need. Uh, you want to run all electric, then you'll need 3,000 watts. If you want to just run propane on everything and the few things that you want, uh, a, a, a kilowatt, a thousand watts would easily run a bus nicely. Um, it's just what you want and you have to decide what you want. Um, on, for everyone who's going through these questions, what do I need? I cannot recommend enough. I just love the people at Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. So write that down. If you are lost and you're willing to pay someone just to build the system and ship it to you, no one beats Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. You tell them exactly what you want to run and they will give you exactly what you need to buy. And it's all good prices. At it's They're great people. I've had, I've bought a lot of stuff there. I've seen a lot of stuff there. I just really, really recommend Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. Great people, uh, really good people. They don't have the best panels, the press prices on solar panels. They have good prices, but not the best. What it, the ideal thing is to buy your panels at Santan Solar um, and then buy everything else as a kit. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll you say, I want to run this and I'm going to buy, uh, how many solar panels should I buy? Take that and buy them from Santan. The problem is with the big panels, they cost too much to ship. You'll pay, what you save by buying them from these cheap places, you will lose in shipping. If you can go there and pick them up, that's the way to go. That By far, that's the way to go. The shipping on a big solar panel might be $100, and there goes all your savings. So um, everyone, bear in mind that if you want a system designed for you to know exactly what you want, it will be top-notch, top quality. Um, and that's the problem. If you're on a budget, they're going to give you a top-notch, top quality system, top of the line. And it'll be top of the money. Um, but it will last you forever, and you will never regret a part of it. I promise you that, because they're that good. Uh, and if you want someone to go install it, and they'll charge you more, uh, discount solar in the winter at Quartzsite. They're very, very good. They are very, very good. They do top quality work. Their prices are high. Their, their, their prices are high. They're top dollar. Uh, at least Northern Arizona Wind and Sun has good prices on, on really everything they sell. Uh, not great, but, but good. And top notch people. And it's changing. I'm not sure if they do solar installs or not. But uh, another good, great place is AM Solar in um, Oregon. AM Solar in Oregon is the same thing. Top notch, top price, top of the dollar. You can't pay more. But when you're done, Oh man, it'll be done. It'll be done right. It'll be done well. Uh, so, uh, and I tell you who I love, and I'm assuming he's still in business, is Solar Mike in Slab City. And if you Google search that, you'll find him. Uh, man, I love that guy. My first solar panel I bought from him. He took the time. He put. He he made the cables for me. And I think, and I know people who have gone to him with a problem, and he just fixed it. Not a penny charged. Just a jewel of a human being and great prices and a and just solar mic in slab city i really recommend him probably my number one because he's a jewel of a human being and you, those guys all need to be celebrated so you, if you look up solar mic in slab city you'll find him all right i better move on if solar power is the sun why do you need batteries i thought solar was so you don't need batteries what do you do overnight when there's no sun uh, when you come up with an answer for that, the answer will be batteries. Uh, beyond that, the answer is fluctuations. Uh, the solar, the, the, the power output directly from the sun fluctuates tremendously. Uh, it fluctuates with the temperature. It fluctuates with where the sun is on the horizon. 
right now it's way up there i'm pointing right at the sun it's way up there it's almost directly overhead but when it rose this morning it was down there flat when it's flat it goes through more uh it goes through a lot more atmosphere when it's straight above it doesn't go through much atmosphere it gets keeps more of its power when it comes from for the horizon it's very low it's going through a lot of atmosphere it's losing a lot of its heat and power uh and of course i've got trees so i didn't get anything in the morning only here so uh, it fluctuates tremendously by the season by the time of the day if it's got a perfect day it's cold you're getting a huge amount of power a cloud comes in front it drops by three quarters or more two thirds more um and then there's something the cloud edge effect as it comes out of the cloud it spikes a big burst of power. So you're getting these very high fluctuations of power. Well, the point of the battery is there's no fluctuating of the power coming out of there. It's all 12 volt in this battery. It doesn't go up and down wildly, wildly, uh, like does a um, the panel, the power coming out of the panel. So a battery solves the fluctuation problems and it also solves the battery. What are you gonna do overnight? You don't have any sun overnight, what are you gonna do? Are you going to run, just stop using all electricity overnight? That seems very, very unlikely, especially in the winter when it gets dark at five o'clock. Uh, doesn't come, get, doesn't get light again until eight, and doesn't and gets dark again at five. Well, that's no good. You're going to have power, uh, so you got to have power, batteries. Catherine Taylor, how much solar panel do I need to run a small fridge? If you're running one of the small 12 volt uh, fridges, you need 200 watts. 200 watts will do it as a minimum. Um, and most of your other things, you can run fans, you can run lights, you can run your laptop, 200 watts. Uh, that's what I recommend for most people. 300 is better. 300 is better, especially in the winter when the, or on rainy days. You get a stretch of rainy days, 300 watts. The, what's important about these stretches of rainy days is because even on a stretch of rainy days, the sun will come out sometime. The more solar you have on the roof, the more it'll suck in in that short, brief period of time. So it, it's really important uh, in in bad weather to have as much as possible on the roof you get one day um, of, of good weather you get a half a day of good weather out of, out of a long stretch of bad no sun and on that one day you want to get everything in you possibly can and if you have 100 watts on the roof you're not going to get much in but if you have 200 watts on the roof you're going to get twice as much if you have 400 watts on the roof you're going to get four times as much in on that one day and maybe that will get you through the stretch of bad weather. See, these are the kinds of the ways you got to think. We all just think of sunny days in the summer and oh, it's great. It's not always sunny days in the summer, my friends. Your solar panels and your batteries will thank you if you plan for the worst possible time. So two, 200 watts is the minimum, 300 watts is I recommend. Now I'm assuming that you're talking about a 12 volt compressor fridge. If you're talking about a regular uh, RV fridge on propane, that's a different animal, and I don't really have an answer for you. I've never owned an RV. Uh, okay. Oh, we just left solar for one more. How much do you need for my bus? Uh, I was going to try to mount two solar panels or truck camp. Uh, here's some Margie K. I'm going to try to mount two solar panels on our truck camper. It already has a Yakima bike rack. I'm assuming it's the bike racks on the roof panel, on the roof itself. What will be the best material to use for the frame for the panels so they stay safe in the wind? Um, yeah, aluminum angle. Uh, it, if it were angle iron, you know, you'd probably understand exactly what I'm saying, except it's the same thing, except it's aluminum. And so it's lighter and easier to work with. It's easy to cut, literally easy to cut uh, uh, aluminum angle. Um, and it's very strong, very, very strong. So I would uh, run those across. Uh, you will need four of them because they're L's and you'll want two on each panel and i'd run those across both them into the the rack that's mounted on the roof and then bolt the panel into the uh that going in from the sides because it's an l and may and, and bolt it in from the sides make sure you get good airflow underneath solar panels need a lot of airflow underneath um and so uh, uh yeah that's what i would i would strongly recommend aluminum angle everyone sells it just go to uh uh, Home Depot or Ace or every hardware sells it. They'll have it in eight foot lengths. And on your, uh, what did you say you had? You had a truck camper. So your truck camper is probably eight foot. And that would give you the whole width of the truck camper if you got an eight foot length. It's not that expensive. It's 
work super super easy to work with very strong very light rita abietta a-b-e-y-t-a if solar power is from the sun why do you need batteries we just answered that one catherine solar how much solar power do i need to run a small fridge uh 200 watts is a minimum uh scott jones what about solar if you have a minivan 200 watts i recommend strongly 200 watts on a minivan uh, you should be able to mount 200 to 100 watt solar panels on any minivan quite well no problem Worst comes to worst, if you have the if you have the rack already on, aluminum angle going across, uh, and if you don't, then uh, just feet. That you can buy feet for your solar panels, and then they just bolt straight into the roof. Drill a hole, run a bolt through, and uh, lots of caulking, and you're great. It'll do it. S stay stay good forever. Uh, I have a 2,000 watt Cindy Ward. I have a 2,000 watt power inverter. How much solar do I need to run the basics? Laptop, AC, et cetera. <laughs> AC. <laughs> so you're good at AC. When you said laptop, you were good. When you said AC, then no, you're down. You're not going to run AC. It takes a very special situation to be able to run air conditioning off solar. Do not think about it. Uh, again, if, if, you, if you know enough to be able to run air conditioning off solar, then you don't need to, be, to ask me about it. You know as much as I do or more. You need a minimum of 750 watts to run AC, and that's bare minimum, and you really need 1,000, and that's bare minimum. You really need 1,200 watts of AC to run any kind. You need 200 watts of solar, 1,200 watts of solar to run any kind of AC, and that's still not much. So don't even think in terms of running AC. And everything else, 200 watts will do it, unless you're running something that's especially a lot. Earlier, someone asked about a sewing sewing machine i would i don't know you'd have to know the, know the numbers but i'd say you'd at least need at least another 100 or 200 watts if you're running something special like that uh, so for example if you want to run a big um uh blender uh, those run longer those are going to run i don't know how much you run a blender how long do you run a blender 10 minutes and they're very high draw for 10 minutes i run a microwave i run a microwave on, and my fridge on 200 watts you can do it um but the microwave only runs five minutes. Remember that. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever run it more than five minutes. Occasionally I'll do five minutes and then uh, another five minutes. Uh, but I've never run them longer. So uh, you don't need a 2,000 watt inverter unless you want to run um, a, a microwave. And um, so really that was probably a waste of money. You don't need a 2,000. Almost no one needs a 2,000 watt inverter. Unless you know exactly why, do not buy a 2,000 watt inverter. Most no, no one needs more than a 600 watt. Unless you know, this is why I need a big one because, fell in the blank, I need a big blender. I need a pure sine wave for AC. Um, I want to run a table saw. I mean, that's what you're talking about for a 2,000 watt inverter. Uh, you don't need them. Dan Canoodle, uh, how many hours does the refrigerator on average run? Depends on the fridge. Mine doesn't run hardly anything. I have a, a truck fridge. I bet I don't run my more than um, four hours ever, ever. Even now, I bet it doesn't run more than four hours in a day. The runtime is really remarkably low. I've added extra insulation. You keep them full. They don't. They need less. Uh, mine is just really, really, really good. I run mine. I bet five hours at max. But it just all depends. I don't. I keep mine at about 34. If you want it to be a freezer, then it's going to run double that or triple that. Uh, yeah, I once tried to run one as a freezer, and it ran a lot. It ran a whole lot. So it depends on a lot of. There are a lot of variables, but uh, for the average person, just a fridge, uh, four or five hours. It's really remarkably little. That's why you can get away with 200 watts because it's really remarkably little. Mine's drawing about four or five amps, and if it runs for four hours, that's 20 amps at the most that I'm, I'm probably drawing with mine. It's, it's really pretty remarkable. Uh, Money Merriweather. I was going to get a solar set up, but I decided to do a secondary instead of my van. It's cheaper. What do you think? Everyone drastically overestimates the power they get off of the car when it's running. When it's idling, it's very, very low. The, the alternator is not putting out much because it would overcharge the battery. Once the battery is full, your starting battery, the alternator stops putting out. If it kept putting out, it would destroy the starter battery. So unless you have a special setup designed to go directly off the alternator, bypassing the voltage regulator, 
The voltage regulator reads the sits between the alternator and the battery. The voltage regulator reads the battery, and if it's full, it stops charging it. What would happen if it didn't? It would destroy the the, the starting battery, wouldn't it? If it kept charging a full starting battery, it would destroy it. So if you're connecting to the starting battery, you're on the other side of the voltage regulator. The voltage regulator reads the starting battery as full, stops charging. Then all you're doing is sucking off of the starting battery, which is slow. And then the voltage regulator will read the loss from the starting battery as it goes into the uh, secondary house battery. Um, and then it will allow more voltage through. It's a slow, it's much slower than you think. Much, much slower than you think. Most people use too small a wire, and that's a bottleneck in the amount of power that's being passed through. Um, most people tremendously overestimate, end up killing their batteries. Uh, there are, are direct DC to DC uh, uh, chargers. Renogy makes one, um, other, other people make them, and that will give you faster charging because it will pull power out of the starting battery and put it in, and, that, and then the alternator will run more. Here's something else to think about that. If your alternator runs more, it fails more often. And pretty simple, right? Your alternator runs twice as much because you're running a house off of it. It, it will fail twice as fast. And most people don't think about that. And changing an alternator on a van or a minivan is an ordeal. Uh, it's an ordeal because there's not much room in there to mess with it. And so with a lot of these alternators, it's a huge job to pull an alternator off. It's not in a pickup or something because you've got all this open space. But in a van, you've got no open space, and it's pretty tough to change one, and they're expensive. It's going to be 300 bucks, if, and you're going to bring that $300 repair or more uh, on much sooner. Your alternator will run twice as much, and it'll fail twice as often. So there's it's give and take. And, and uh, solar is dead quiet, and it runs whether no matter what's going on and it's pain free and once you've installed it you're golden for years and years and years to come so my answer to you is it's a mistake to depend unless you do drew unless you use practically no power it is a mistake to want to use alternator only uh, that's my answer for nearly everyone most people should have a solar system all right I thought I'd go till 20 after because that's when we started questions. Uh, the Creative Rover, confused by Watson and Amps, as many are. I can't really answer that here. I'll tell you who has a great book. Oh, what's his name? What's the guy's name with the great channel that just stopped being a nomad? KC, do you remember? Will Prowse. Will Prowse. Will Prowse has got a book on, um, on Amazon on 12 volt. It's a really good book. And I would really recommend, and it uses, we all use the same analogy of flowing water, and it really works. It, we all use it because it's the only comparable analogy of, of, of uh, flowing water and, and electricity. It works really well. So uh, if you squeeze water together, you get more pressure. That's amps. Uh, water that is working, so water that hits a turbine and turns a turbine, that's watts. It's electricity at work. It's water at work. Uh, you squeeze it together. That's voltage. The voltage goes up. That does more work when it's turned into watts. Uh, and so, uh, and I'm not. That's I shouldn't have done that because I'm not really able to. Um, we got motorcycles going by. Nice guys. They slowed down. They were careful. They were good guys. I, I always appreciate that. Uh, uh, they waved and said goodbye. And so that was good. Uh, Will Prowse has got a great book. Just go to go to uh, Amazon, look it up on. Uh, go to the books. You know uh, what area? Go to books. Type 12 volt solar. Will Prowse. P R O W S C. I think. Uh, and his channel is fantastic. Will Will's channel is fantastic. Uh, he's really the solar guy. Uh, and so I would really recommend his book. That will explain the water analogy, and you can study it when it's there in print. Okay. Uh, how, many, how many hours is a refrigerator on average run? I was going to get a solar setup, but I can do the secondary batteries. Is that cheaper? What do you think? Okay, I think I answered all those. Okay, we'll go to one card for a week. I'll go five more minutes. 
I'll, I'll go an actual hour of answering questions. I talked 20 minutes on inter and the introduction. Uh, George M. Bob, you recommend a brand or solar panel? Solar panels themselves have become have become uh, commodities, and the best is Kyocera. I, I personally believe the best solar panel is Kyocera, and they're reasonably priced. The big panels I think are reasonably priced. I think they're higher quality, but it's not worth the money. I my recommendation is buy the cheapest solar panel you can buy. I, poly. One of your questions will be poly or mono. Buy whichever one's cheapest. I, uh, each have an advantage and a disadvantage. Uh, there's controversy. Um, I don't. I think just buy on price. Uh, I, you know, go to Santan Solar and buy used. Uh, make sure that they, they have tested the voltage and the, and the amps, uh, and I think they always do. Uh, buying used, I'm a, I'm a fan of buying used. Uh, if if it's cheap enough, I mean, you got to save. You know, they're they're already cheap, but you got to get a lot cheaper. Uh, no reason not to buy used. Solar panels are commodities now. It's not really a, a, a brand. Now it's price. That's what I'm going to suggest on solar panels. I do think Kyocera, and I believe they're actually finally assembled in San Diego. So there is some American manufacturing involved in them. Although there's a Canadian solar, and I think they're made in Canada. That's good. Could support our Canadian brothers. That's, that's a good thing. Um, and I believe there are some American made. Maybe that's worth it to you. Uh, I, I recommend used. Uh, they're commodities. Buy on price. Uh, <laughs> Anaheim, Chris. Solar stresses me out, Bob. Can I move in with you? Boy, we would be tight in my little van. And Cody, too. And so, no, I don't think so. But um, I understand. Uh, ride with me, 38. Is there an ideal ratio of panels, watts to battery amps? I think two to one. Uh, it's been one to one. Uh, I think one to one is okay. But I really recommend two to one. 200 watts of, uh, of panels for every 100 amps of battery. I think that's ideal. Uh, yeah. But you can get away with one-to-one. -one. You certainly can get away with one-to-one. -one. A lot of people go one-to-one, -one and they're fine. Uh, 100 watts panel, 100 watts of 100 amp hours of battery. What well, is a good system to start with? My draw is about 1,000 watts. Uh, well, I rec I'm a big fan of Renogy. Renogy has supported the community as well. Renogy gave us a bunch of, a, a whole uh, 40 panel, 40 systems at a very, very discounted price. So I'm a, and, I, and long before then, I'm not just saying that because they've supported us. Long before then, I've been saying for, as long as Renogy has been around, I've been saying buy Renogy kits. And I'm gonna say it again. I still say it, it hasn't changed, not just because they supported us, that may, gives me all the more reason to say it, buy a Renogy kit. They are in LA. You can go to their office and walk in and say, this is broken. And they'll help you face to face. I love that. How are you gonna do that with almost any Chinese manufacturer? So, and if you call them on the phone, someone will answer, he'll speak English and he'll help you. And their after, after sales service has been good. Uh, I, you know, is, are they perfect? No, I'm sure they're not. But has it been really, really good? Yes, I honestly believe it has. I'm a pretty big fan of Renogy, and so I'm going to recommend that uh, you buy a Renogy kit. You can buy cheaper, um, and the cheaper ones are probably as good, but that after-service support is so important. And while you're installing it, you can call them and ask them a question. I, I, but if you want to buy a higher-end, now they're not a higher-end system. Uh, they're good quality at a good price. If you want to go high end, then I recommend number one, uh, Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. Great people, great, great, great people. I don't know if they'll install it. You'll have to call them and ask them. I, it's not clear to me if they're installing now or not. Uh, but those are the two. Uh, I would really recommend the Renogy system that you install. I don't think they do any installs, uh, but they'll, they'll, they'll back you up at the after the sale, and I think that's worth it. Whatever a little more you have to pay for them. Um, and and Northern Arizona Wind and Sun, Solar Mike. I don't recommend him enough. I'm a huge fan of Solar Mike. He's a really good human being. Um, he did me really really good. I know he's done a lot of people really really good. Solar Mike at Slab City. Uh, what solar companies do you recommend? We just covered that. I am looking at a 200 watt panel. What good? The 200 watt panels are a good size. What size controller should I get? 20 amp will do it. 
I think 30 would be better. Um, and how many batteries would you suggest? Uh, 200 watt batteries would be the minimum. 200 amp hour batteries would be the minimum soldery. Sorry, I get busy and don't, don't think fast. A 20 amp controller is adequate. It's adequate uh, and it'll save you some money. I think 30 might be better, but uh, give you some more leeway, headroom. Um, but uh, you can save, so I'm gonna recommend a 30 amp a controller, but you could save some money and get a 20 amp and get away with it. And then just a uh, 200, probably 150 to 200 amp hours of battery. Probably two golf carts. Two golf carts would be about ideal. Uh, Zauer has it off. Solenoid versus solar. With all travel, one can charge up on batteries. Do you really need mounted solar panels? In my opinion, yes. Uh, most people will not, don't mention that you're going to kill your, your uh, alternator. It's going to run twice as much, produce twice as much power. It's going to last half as long. So you're going to be paying for it. You're paying for it either way. And, uh, and I think you're, you, you're going to, most people drive less than they think. They charge less than they think. They kill their batteries more than they think. So I think by the time you've killed your alternator and you've killed your batteries, you would have been a lot better off spending the money on solar. Solar and charging off the alternator work together so well. I really, really recommend that. Uh, yes, in my mind, solar is preferable. Do both, but if you can only do one or the other, get solar. Uh, Pat McCary. Hi, hi, Bob. Okay, so I have collected most of what I need for solar. I have a 200-watt Dokio foldable, 100-watt uh, and 100 watt solar batteries, but then do I spent and bought a 3,000 pure sign inverter? No, no, you don't need a 3,000 pure sign inverter. If you could possibly to return it, please return it. It's money thrown away. What are you going to run with a 3,000 watt pure sign inverter? The only thing you would run that on is um, is a microwave or an air conditioner. Big big draws, and you don't have enough solar to run either of those. No, that was money thrown away. Please, if at all possible. Take back that 3,000 watt pure sine wave inverter. You're, that's money thrown away. Um, if you if you build a system that will run a microwave and air conditioning, then and even then you don't need, you only need a 2,000 watt and that would be cheaper. Uh, I don't know, maybe not. Depends on what you bought, but uh, yeah, you don't need a 3,000 watt pure sine with that small a system. You don't have the system to run anything that big. Please take that back if you possibly can. Put the money in your pocket. Send it to Howa if you want to waste it. Uh, okay, I think we've done them all. I don't think she even sent me any more cards. I've done all the cards. And it's late. And she's probably, <laughs> she probably wants me to quit. I'm done. Don't forget bubbles. Oh, bubbles. Oh, okay, bubbles. Go, uh, uh, oh, look, where's Cody? What's up? Where you? Come here. Come on. Come on. What did, how did he know? Oh, he doesn't want to jump up here. I can probably put him down a little bit. They can see Cody. There's that guy. Look at that guy. And who wouldn't love that? Oh, I didn't turn on the bubbles yet. I just went to the area. There's the bubbles. There we go. There's the code. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come on. Who wouldn't love this? Wouldn't you love to wake up to this guy in your rig every day? Man, it's a joy. Come on. It's such a joy to have this guy in my life. Boy. And I know the truth. You just watch my channel for him. I know the truth. I would too if I were you. He's worth it. Okay, I'm glad you all stayed to uh, plug watched. I hope I hope I I try to get this down to such a simple level that you can all understand it. I hope I did. Uh, I try, and uh, if not, it's uh, it's pretty easy. It's we exaggerate the problem. I think it's another. It's a foreign language, and I understand it's a foreign language. It's a. It took me years. I took years. Uh, so when I first when I bought my first system till now uh, was a lot of trial and error fortunately it worked out well for the most part but it was hard I understand I'm not I'm not judging that it's hard for you it was for me too all right folks thanks so much for watching and uh, come back for the next live feed next video comes out Friday uh, I wonder who's on next Friday's video oh we're doing uh, Casey are we doing uh, who Oh, we're going back to winter count uh, and a guy in an ambulance. And uh, we got some good videos coming up from there. It, 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 really interesting. Okay. I will talk to you all later. Thank you so much. I appreciate each and every one of you. Bye now.